Why art thou disquieted within me? Then teach us, gracious Jehovah, to look up unto thee and to hope in thee who art the health of our countenance and our God. So lift up our cast down face and give us to express joy that's in our hearts because we have seen thee and the smile of thy face and the benevolence of thy heart and the tenderness of thy mercy and spirit toward us. Grant that to us whose circumstances are very difficult who have lost loved ones, even recently, bless Brother Schimmel and all of his family, care for them, minister to their hearts, and especially in the loneliness of widowhood and widowerhood. May all of thy people find in thee a refuge and a strength, a companion and a help. Bless those whose burdens are great because family is divided, because sin has done damage, because unbelief of spouse or child or parent has ruptured relationship. And we pray, Father, heal according to Thy will. Grant repentance by Thy Word and by Thy Spirit and by the rebukes and admonitions and words of the neighbor, of the elders and the pastor and the parents and other members of the family of faith. Lord, use Thy Word to correct us, to bring us to a confession of our faults and an ability to pray for each other. Lord, bless those whose burden is pain and sickness. Bless those whose burden is otherwise Burdens that some of us have never even heard of. Burdens that are unknown to the other members of the congregation. Be Thou our help. Be Thou our refuge. Set us up, Father, upon a solid rock so that our feet may be firm and our confession may be loud. We have a God in heaven who loves us and whose care for us is certain. And then again, teach us not to live by sight and those things that we observe and feel, but to live by faith, knowing that the afflictions of the present time are but brief and the burdens of the present time are but light as we compare them to the joy and the glory of heaven. So teach us to be heavenly minded, to live with our sights in the life to come and our hope for the family that will endure into all eternity. But Father, while we wait for that, we pray a blessing upon our earthly family of faith here, the church, Grace Protestant Reformed Church, that there may be unity through a confession of truth and by a humble walk and by a godliness that seeks the others, and a love for the neighbor, and a selflessness. Grant unity and peace here. Bless the elders and the pastor and the deacons with wisdom, with zeal, with courage, with tenderness and mercy, with understanding that by their ministry we may be blessed and lifted up. Bless our members, Father, all of us who are here this morning. Remember those who are not because of illness or disobedience. Whatever circumstance it may be, Father, deal accordingly and treat in wisdom and goodness. Bless us who are assembled this morning. Bless the single members. Bless the families. Speak peace and a word of blessing to our marriages. May husbands be godly, heads of home, upright, men of integrity and leadership, godliness 
examples to their wives and leaders to them and to their children. And bless the wives that they may be wives of beauty within, that their adorning may not be that outward adorning of the world, but that inner beauty and attractiveness of a meek and a quiet spirit which is, Father, of great price. And by the sound marriages that we have, may our children be blessed. When the marriages are not healthy, Father, nevertheless, bless our children and keep them and spare them and overrule our faults and weaknesses as parents. And be merciful to all of our seed, to our children and to our children's children. And bless us, Father, as children. Give us grace that we may honor our parents and obey our father and mother, that we may find hope in Thy Word, that we may be good to other children, and that we may treat them as we desire them to treat us. Lord, bless our pastor in his absence this morning and today. Return him safely tonight and bless him with safety and travel and strengthen him for his work among us. We thank Thee for the brother who trains under our pastor. Bless the Ebays in their stay in our country and prepare them by this internship for a ministry, a long and a fruitful ministry in the Philippines and among Thy people there. Encourage him, continue to qualify and equip him, and give him that confidence as he rests in Thee and trusts in Thy Spirit. Bless now Thy servant who brings us Thy Word today and leads us in the worship from the Scriptures. Open it up to us and open our hearts to Thy Word. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Deacons receive your offering this morning, first of all for the general fund and then for the benevolent fund. Let's worship God in the giving of our gifts. Let's turn in the Psalter to number 89. When you children get to the Psalter number, then look at the first stanza. And when you sing that first stanza, children, then remember that you are singing it to your friends and your brothers and sisters, and that your parents and all of the church are singing this to you. Ye children, come, give ear to me, that is, listen, and learn Jehovah's fear. He who would long and happy live, let him my counsel hear, that is, let him hear my advice. And then comes the advice in stanzas two and following. Let's li sing with understanding the first four stanzas, the first four stanzas of Psalter 89.
Turn in the Word of God this morning to Ephesians chapter 6 and the familiar last chapter of that book. Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to your to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is their respect of persons with him. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, but on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. But that ye also may know my affairs and how I do, Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. The text this morning is the first three verses. The first three verses of Ephesians 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Children and young people, The sermon this morning is for you, especially for you, from a certain point of view, only for you. This is a word of God that addresses you as children and young people. There are other passages in the Bible that do that, you know. If you think of the book of Proverbs, really the entire book of Proverbs is addressed to Solomon's Son, that is, to children. If you think of some of the Psalms, and the one that we just sang is an example, 
Ye children, come, give ear to me. That is, children, listen to me. Then you know that there are certain passages in the Bible, children, that address you. And this is one of them. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3, is a word specially for children. It addresses you, the Word of God does, children, because you are members of the church. You, just like your parents, are members of the church. You've been baptized and have become by that baptism members of the church. That's why the Old Testament addresses children and young people. That's why the Word of God in Ephesians lists different groups of people. It's going to talk in the next verses to your fathers, verse 4 and following. It has a word to say about bosses at work and about workers in relationship to their bosses, but it also has a word addressing you as young people and children. The sermon this morning is specially for you children and young people. And the sermon for you children this morning is very simple. The Word of God to you is honor your father and your mother. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is an important word for you children because out there in the world, outside of the church, they do not know this word. The children do not honor their fathers and their mothers. They don't respect their parents. There's disrespect. There's rebellion. The children are obnoxious. They don't have any idea what this word means. And if they have any idea what this word means, they ignore it altogether. Now sometimes that's their parents' fault. Sometimes that's in the majority the parents' fault because for those children, the man that's living with their mom isn't their father. And the woman that's living with their dad isn't their mother. And so they call that woman by her first name or they call that man by his first name and there isn't the kind of respect and honor that there ought to be. There is disrespect and there is dishonor out there in the world. And it's so bad that some of the teachers in the public schools say, we aren't safe in the classroom. We're afraid of the children because they've never learned to honor those who are in authority over them. And the worst of it is, is that our culture promotes and grows that kind of disrespect and dishonor. May it never be said, never, about the children of Grace Protestant Reformed Church. And may it never be said of you children, of the school that you go to, those children don't honor their parents. They don't obey their father and their mother. And may it always be said of you, what sometimes in great pride and gratitude parents hear in the restaurant when someone remarks about your children, I congratulate you for well-behaved children. May it never be said of you that you dishonor your parents and may it always be said of you, all of you children, those boys and girls and those young people know how to respect their parents. Let's consider this Word of God very briefly this morning under the theme, Children's Honor of Parents. Children's Honor of Parents. Let's see the meaning of that. In the second place, the reasons for that. The Word of God gives two very important reasons for that. And then, in the third place, the possibility of that. Can you really obey and honor your parents? That's Last, the meaning, the reasons, and the possibility. Children, there is really only one calling for you in relationship to your parents. One calling. The Word of God says two things, and those two things are both 
to parts of the one calling that God gives to you. That one calling is not mentioned explicitly in the passage. Do you know what your one calling is towards your parents? That one calling toward your parents, I'm not going to tell you that word yet, that one calling that you have toward your parents' children is divided up into two parts. The first part is honor them, and the second part is obey them. Now you must learn some new words this morning if you don't know those words yet. Children, you must honor your parents. That is, you must respect them. You must reverence them. You must esteem them highly. You must fear your parents. And as soon as I say fear, I must correct a possible misunderstanding. You must not be afraid of your parents, but you must fear your parents. And the difference is the difference between us being afraid of God, who also is our parent, and fearing God. If I'm disobedient to God or unbelieving, I am terrified of God. I am afraid of God. But as a believing son in his family, I am not afraid of Him. I'm not cowering in fear as I stand before God. But I fear Him. That is, I respect Him. I reverence Him. I have highest esteem for Him. And just as the relationship between us children and that parent, so also children, the relationship between you and your parents. You must, the Word of God says, honor your father and your mother. Honor them. Now another word. That means you must be submissive to them. You must submit. And if you don't know what that word means, then your, ch- your parents can remind you after church this morning. Submission is how you think about your parents. Submission is the attitude that you have toward father and mother. Submission is the respect that you have for them because you understand that God has put them over you and that He has put you under them. And that you recognize that relationship of your parents over you in authority and you under them and you want it to be that way. You receive that relationship willingly. Not grudgingly, not angrily, not with a sullen look and a sour attitude, but with gladness. You submit to your parents, just as the members of the church submit to their elders. Just as your mom submits to your dad. Just as you who have a job submit to your boss. Just as all of us submit to the government that we have in this country, so also you children submit to your parents. Children, honor your father and your mother. Respect and reverence and fear them. Submit to them. That's first. Second, you must obey them. Verse 1 says, children, obey your parents. And that's different. That's not the same as honoring them. Because honor is what you don't see. Obedience is what you see. Honor is the attitude that's in your heart toward your parents. Obedience is what you do when your parents tell you to do something. Or what you don't do when your parents say, don't do that. If your parents this morning, children, said at about 7.30 or so, time to get up, it's breakfast, we need to get ready for church, then you obey them and you get up. If after breakfast your parents say, time to get dressed and get in the car, then you get dressed and you get in the car and you go to church. That's obedience. It's outward. Honor is inside. 
Obedience primarily is outside. You must obey your parents in everything except when your parents tell you to disobey God. If your parents ever tell you, children, to do something that God says you must not do, then you must disobey your parents. You must not obey them then. You must always respect them then, but you may not obey them when they tell you to disobey God. But otherwise, in everything, you must both honor and obey your parents. Now, those are the two parts of the one calling that you children have. Do you children know yet what that one calling is? If we would put these verses in a different way, we could say, children, love your parents. Boys and girls, love your father and your mother. And we would not be saying anything different than what this text says. Now the text doesn't say that. It says obey and it says honor. But behind that calling to obey and honor is really this one calling. Love them. Love them. And you know that, children, because this morning when we read the Ten Commandments, after the minister read all of those Ten Commandments, then he came to the New Testament and said, these ten words are summarized by this one word, love God and love your neighbor. This really is nothing more than the Fifth Commandment. It's a quotation of Deuteronomy 5 and Exodus 20. Children, obey your parents in the Lord and honor your father and your mother. What is that? Love them. Love them. And if you love them, this is how you will do it. You will honor them and you will obey them. The Word of God, when it says to you children to love your parents does not mean the kind of earthly love that some unbelieving children have for their parents. There's a certain love that they have. They realize that dad and mom brought them into this world. That dad and mom fed them and gave them a place to live and bought them clothing and provided for them an education and a shelter and a safety that some other children don't have. And those unbelieving children have a certain earthly love for their parents. And they even say it, I love you. And they even show it by respecting and obeying their parents in a certain outward way. But that's not what the Word of God means to you children this morning. The Word of God to you children means this morning, love your parents with the kind of love that you have in your heart for God. Love them spiritually. Love them with your new hearts that were given to you by Jesus Christ. And this is how you love them. You honor them and you obey them. I suppose all of you have been to a funeral home, or at least you adults, where an older man or an older woman died and one of his unbelieving children comes to that funeral home and is crying over the casket or is weeping in response to the funeral message that the minister preaches. And then you're puzzled by that because you say, it appears that he loves his father or loved his father or mother. He's crying over their absence and death. But all his life long, he disobeyed his parents and disrespected them and didn't submit to them. How do you fit those two together? Well, you analyze those tears as not spiritual tears, as earthly tears, as earthly sorrow. He didn't love his father or his mother, and he doesn't love them now because he still dishonors them and does not respect them. Children, this is how you honor your parents. No, this is how you love your parents. You obey them and you honor them. Let's see now how that works out briefly. In the first place, children, this applies to both your father and your mother. The text makes that plain. Honor your father and your mother. 
There's an important caution on both sides. Children, you must not honor only your father because you know that when father comes home, he's got a big stick and he's going to use it. And maybe mom is more gentle and mom is home and you can get away with things from your mom, but you can't with your dad. So you're going to honor and respect your father, but you don't honor and respect your mother. Children, honor your father and your mother. Honor your mother as one whom God put over you. Honor your mother with the kind of fear and respect that you have for God Himself. Because God put her there too. And the other side of that is honor your father. In this culture where fathers are dishonored, where women are elevated, where men are portrayed as bumbling fools, as foolish oafs, as clueless men. The Word of God says, honor your father too. Honor your father and your mother. The second place how this works out is that you honor and obey them by listening to them. Listen to your parents. I say that not because that's my opinion, but because the Word of God teaches us that one important duty that your parents have is to teach you and to teach you everything that they have learned about the Word of God as it applies to you. They need to teach you how to live in your body and be clean, how to live in the Spirit and be clean within. They need to teach you about dating and about marriage, about work and about time management. They need to teach you how to conduct yourself toward your teachers at school. They need to teach you how to study. They need to teach you how to behave toward your friends at school. They have all kinds of things that they need to teach you, and that requires that they talk to you, and that you sit down, and that you listen to them. So loving your parents is that you honor them and that you obey them by listening to them, by sitting down when they have something to say and closing your mouth. If this afternoon, after your nap is finished, to you, sit down and talk for a little while. You children don't say to your parents, well, I have some other things I have to do. I'd like to read. I'd like to sleep a little bit longer. You say, yes, Dad. I'll listen. And you get up and you wipe the sleep from your eyes and you give a good hearing to what your father and your mother have to say. If tonight after you get home from visiting your friends before bed, your parents who've been waiting up for you, as they probably ought to do, say, now, before you go to bed, let's sit down and let's talk for a little while. We have some things we've been thinking about. We'd like to convey our thoughts to you. And you don't mumble and complain and say, it's late, it's time for bed, even though it's late and it's time for bed. You sit down on the couch and you give all of the time that your parents need to talk to you. You listen to them. You listen to them especially on a weekday evening or any other time that you have your family devotions. Your dad reads the Word of God or your family reads the Word of God together. Then your father says, now we're going to apply that Word. We have some things to say to you about that Word, children. Then you don't impatiently look at your watch and say, but, but my friends are waiting. But we have things to do outside. We want to play. You sit down, you settle in, and you let your father and your mother open and explain and apply that Word of God to you. That's how you obey your parents, honoring and esteeming them. That's how you love your parents, by listening to them. Let me ask, let me ask you a question that will make that clear. We live in another family relationship that I've already alluded to. We live in a family relationship with Father in Heaven. He's adopted us into His family. He's embraced us in love. He says to you, 
You're mine. I've given you birth, new birth. I provide for you everything that you need. And now you must honor and respect me. How is it that we show that we honor and respect God the Father? Is it not what we are doing right now? Is it not this way that we settle down? That we don't look at our clock constantly? That we open up the Bible and have Him speak to us? And have one of His servants explain and apply that word to us as children? Then we're not saying, well, it's time for lunch. Well, we have other things to do. No, as obedient children, as those who love their Father in heaven, we sit down and we listen because God the Father has a multitude of things to say to us. Isn't that true, children? In church, your parents sit and listen. Now, in your earthly family, that's what God, God calls you to do. Listen to your parents. The third place that works out this way, that you older children have a special and a greater responsibility here. Those of you who are in families that have more than one child, you oldest children, not the oldest, but the oldest ones, realize that you have a greater responsibility because your younger brothers and sisters are watching you. It's not true that when you get older, your relationship to your parents may loosen and that you may gradually disrespect them and listen to them less and less. But the case is, the older you get, the more you must listen to them. The more you must honor and respect them. Why? Because your younger brothers and sisters are learning something. And what they're learning, what they're learning is from you. And if they see you looking at your watch and hear you complaining about wanting to go away, then they're going to do that too, especially if dad and mom don't put their foot down very, very quickly and say, no, you must listen to us. I'm convinced that if, if, and that's a big if, not necessarily true, if it's the case in a family that the younger children are more disrespectful to the parents than the older children and live a life that's more disobedient than the older children. It's not because parents loosen up when they get older, though sometimes they do, and sometimes that's proper to loosen up a little bit because they were unrealistic when they were younger. But all those qualifications aside, I'm convinced that if the younger children are more disobedient than the older children, it's not because parents have loosened up, but because those younger children have followed the examples of the older children, their older brothers and sisters. Now, remember that older siblings, boys and girls, who have younger brothers and sisters. Somebody's watching you. And it's not only God that's watching you, it's your younger family members. And then remember this, young people and children, the Word of God says to your parents, it would be better if a millstone, a big heavy stone were hanged about your neck, their neck, and cast into the ocean, than that they would offend a little one. That is, if you have a choice between being cast into the sea and drown and causing a little one to sin, this one would be better. And that applies to you too. Don't, young people, cause your younger brothers and sisters to sin. And then last, that works out this way. Parents need to teach that. Parents need to demand that. Parents must tell their children and command that of their children. Children, you must honor and obey us. The parents do that. And now children, this is a word for your father and your mother that's implied in this text. There's a word for them too today. They must do that. The parents must by modeling honor and respect. 
Sometimes you hear about a man or a woman that their whole life is lived in such a way that they demand respect without saying one word. You picture men and women like that. They're men and women of integrity. You know that when they speak, they're going to do what they say. When they make a promise, they will keep that promise. You know that what goes on behind the scenes in their home is the very same thing that they present to you outwardly in church. They're honorable people. They're kind. They're gentle. They love God. They worship God. They do good. And without saying one word, those people, men and women, command respect. Their lives draw respect. And that's how parents need to live. And yet it's not only that, it's that we parents must say it to our children. We must teach that to our children in such a way that we demand it. Children, you must honor us who are parents. We actively instruct them. We don't put up, not for a moment, with disrespect. Not for one second. We don't indulge our children, letting them get away with anything they well please to get away with. We don't receive our children and raise them up as though they're the greatest gift God ever gave to this congregation and perhaps even to the whole world. We don't act toward our children that way, as though they can't do anything that's wrong. We, from their earliest years, inculcate in them that they respect and honor us as parents. And that means, very practically speaking, that they listen to us the first time we say something. The first time we say on Sunday morning, it's time to get up, it's time for breakfast. They immediately are up and on the way to the breakfast table. We don't train them by saying it quietly the first time. And if they don't listen the first time, say it a little bit louder the second time. And finally, after we're completely exasperated, shout down, now if you don't get up, you're not having breakfast today. And then finally they get up because they know that's when dad and mom mean it. We train our children from the earliest days that the very first time we say something, they obey. And if they don't, we punish them. We punish them for disobedience, what is seen and what's outward, and we punish them for disrespect, what parents can see more than you children realize, the attitude that you have. Because foolishness is bound up in the heart of the children. And the rod of correction drives it far from them. We punish disrespect and disobedience. Children, what's the one calling that God gave to you with regard to your parents? Love them. Children, how does that love work out in two ways? You honor them and you obey them. Now, The Word of God gives you children reasons that you ought to do that. Maybe you asked the question this morning, why? Why must I? Why would I? Why do I want to? Why should I honor and obey my parents? The Word of God says two things about that. In the first place it says, because. Because this is right. Honor your father and your mother and obey your parents Because this is right. Which means that not honoring and obey them is wrong. There are standards here that you need to measure up to. There's such a thing as right and wrong. You won't get that impression if you listen to the newspaper columnists. You read the advice. One generation something is right. The next generation something is wrong. In one generation, something is wrong. In the next generation, that wrong becomes right. And you never know what's going to be right or wrong. But for you children, you may know that forever, until the Lord returns, this is right. Honor your father and your mother. Obey your parents. That command will never change. 
love them. Love them with all your heart. Love them. It's right. That's all that's necessary, isn't it? If your parents tell you to do something and you say, why? Sometimes your parents are going to say, because I said so. And then you must listen. And you probably better not ask why with that tone of voice because then discipline comes and a rod comes off the refrigerator and you go to the bedroom and get a spanking for asking that kind of question. Why? But if you ask your parents with respect, why? I don't understand this. Then they might just say to you, because this is right. And then you be satisfied with that answer and you go do what dad and mom ask you to do. But just as in earthly family, so also in a heavenly family, that's not the only explanation of that word, this is right. God is not saying to us in the text this morning, obey your parents because I said so. There's more to that word right than that. We could translate that word this way, obey your parents in the Lord for this is righteousness. And now you need to learn another word, children. This is righteousness. Righteousness is that our lives, our thinking and our speaking and all of our lives match up with God's life like my right hand now matches up with my left hand. The palm of my hand and every finger matches up with the other hand. That's righteousness. Righteousness, to use another example, is if a builder has a plan for building a house and that house is so big on the plan and of this color and shape and material, what is built matches exactly with that plan. That house is, you could say, a righteous house. And the Word of God says to us this morning, Obey your parents because this is righteousness. It means when you obey your parents, you are measuring your life up to God's life and to God's standard. Here it is. Now fit your life according to His life. Where is that standard? Where is that plan for the lives and the conduct of children? Children understand this. It's in the life and the conduct of the Lord Jesus Christ. God the Son come in the flesh is the pattern for all of us. And our lives must measure up to the life of God the Son come in the flesh. Now some theology. Be careful. Some deep theology. I am not saying that it's the life of God the Son in the Trinity. Because the life of God the Son in the Trinity is not a life of subordination to the Father in the Trinity. They're equal in authority. They're equal in power. Though they are different in activity, they are not subordinate one to another. But I refer now to the life of God the Son who came down to be like us. Who became a man like we are men who took upon our flesh like we have flesh and blood, as that man, Jesus Christ, related to His Father in heaven, that's the pattern for us to measure up our lives in conformity with His life. And then if you think for a moment about that life, you say there was never a son who honored his father like that son. There was never a son who obeyed his parent like that son. The Lord Jesus Christ was right. From his earliest youth, when he became conscious of who he was and what he was about, he had utmost respect for the Father in heaven. He never dishonored God. He never disobeyed his Father in heaven. He always obeyed instantly and perfectly and wanted to do the Father's will. The psalm, you understand, applies to him. Thy word is in my heart, O Lord. I come to do thy will. 
That's the words of a son speaking to his father in heaven who obeyed and honored his father because he loved his father. He listened to him. All his life long, he listened to him. In his youth, he studied the Old Testament Scripture and let that Old Testament Scripture govern his life and become a part of his mind and determine how he thinks. The Lord Jesus Christ studied the Word of God as a youth. He knew that Word of God. He wanted to know it. He sat down regularly, as it were, and said, Speak, Father, for thy servant heareth. He was conscious of the fact that he had siblings. He understood very well that he is the oldest in the family and that all of his younger brothers and sisters, spiritually younger, were going to watch him and see how he related to his Father in heaven and how he did it we would do it. And so there was never a tone of disrespect. He was thinking of you. Remember that older children? I told you you have a special place of importance in your family because your younger brothers and sisters are watching you. Now you understand why I said that because the Word of God calls Christ our elder brother. Our older brother Jesus is, and we're all watching him, and he knew it, and he felt that pressure, and he lived and measured up to that pressure so that now he becomes the standard, the standard up to which all our lives must measure so that we live toward our parents like he lived toward his parent. And now you understand why in the Old Testament the punishment for disobedience was as severe as it was. Everyone that curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. Death? For disobedient children? Yes, death. Why? Because this is righteousness that children honor and obey and respect their parent. This is measuring up to the life of God in heaven. And they must not be a bad testimony to their neighbors around them, the Canaanites and the Philistines, who would see them and say, oh, that's the way the Father in heaven lives. His Son disrespects Him because this is the way His people live. That's why when the New Testament speaks of the coming disobedience in the world, it does so in the language of the children's relationship to the parents. How many times doesn't the Word of God prophesy about how bad it's going to be in the end times? And then among the list of all of the other sins, fornication and covetousness and maliciousness and envy and murder and deceit and malignity and all those other big words. It has this, disobedient to parents. When Paul speaks of the apostate church in 2 Timothy 3, he says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, and disobedient to their parents. Why? Because this is right. That is, this is righteousness. But perhaps you children ask, why with a little a little tinge of selfishness and say, is there anything in this obedience of my parent to my parents for me? Then this is the second answer to the question, why? Because for you who obey and honor your parents, there's reward. There's great reward. And that reward comes out in the text too when it says, This is the first commandment with promise. 
That's how God deals with His children, with all of us. He says, honor me and I'll reward you. Obey me and I'll bless you. I'll gift you with the greatest gifts as you walk in obedience to me. And so, that's how He speaks to children in earthly families too. Children, if you honor and obey your parents, then it will go well with you and you will live long on the earth. That's the kind of God we have. That's the kind of Father we have in heaven. He rewards obedience. That's the way we treat our children too, isn't it, parents? That's how we ought to treat our children. When you do your work, then at the end of that doing of that work is a reward. Not always, but often, isn't there? And if there isn't, then we need to rethink how we do our parenting because we model our parenting after God's parenting and God says to us that with obedience to Him is a great reward. And that reward isn't simply a pie in the sky, some long distant future reward, but it's a reward that we experience daily. So also earthly parents reward their children. When you're finished raking the lawn, when you're finished mowing the yard, when you're finished doing the dishes or cleaning the room, then I have a couple of dollars for you that you may save up to bring to the candy store at vacation this week. And you children are motivated more to obey your parents because you say, Dad and Mom are so good to me that they give me good things after I'm finished obeying them. And that's what the Word of God does to you, too. The Word of God says to you children, there's a reward for you who obey your parents. It's long life, and it will go well with you in that long life. And both of those go together. Understand that. A long life on the earth without all being well with you is nothing. It's miserable. A long life of evil is misery and not a reward. But both of them go together for obedient children. You may live long on the earth and it will go well with you in that long life. Now maybe you have a problem with that because you say, well, I know some young people who obeyed their parents and they died young. And I know some other young people who disobeyed their parents and they're still living. And how do you reconcile that, you say, with the Word of God that promises long life and that it will go well with them who obey their parents. Well, though that's a difficult question, the problem is not, why was God cruel to that young man who He caused to die young? And why was God good to that young man who He allows to live long? That's not the problem, because God wasn't cruel to that little boy who died when he was young, or that young girl who died when she was young. God was good to them and brought them up home to the heavenly family. And God isn't good to that young man who's disobedient to his parents because if you could see behind the scenes, his life is miserable. It's not pleasant. It isn't going well for him. It isn't. But this is the norm. This is the usual. That he will live long on this earth and all of those long days it will go well with him in his heart. He will know the blessing of God and he will feel that blessing of God. A life of peace and a life of joy and a life of contentment. Young people and children, if you are tempted to disobey your parents or if perhaps right now within you you are living in rebellion and you are stubborn in that rebellion, Listen to the Word of God to you. Will you keep on in that rebellion, though God says to you, when you obey your parents in the Lord and honor them, it will go well with you? Will you continue on in your disobedience, even though you know that disobedience leads you to misery and it will not go well with you? This is right, 
and there's reward. And if perhaps you young people say in response to this sermon, and that in submission to God too, how can I? How can I? Then I can say very briefly that that's explained in that phrase in the text that says, in the Lord. You children were baptized, weren't you? When the minister baptized you, he used a very important phrase. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That phrase, in the, is repeated here to remind you that you are in the Lord. That is, you're connected to Him by faith. And by that connection of faith, the life of your older brother flows into you. The obedient life of your older brother becomes your obedient life as you trust Him. And as you look to Him who was obedient all the way till He went to the cross and He died for you so that all your sins are forgiven. There's not one sin that God's going to punish in the end because your older brother obeyed his Father in heaven. And then he went to the grave and out of that grave he became alive and ascended up into heaven. And he united himself to you by faith and he gives you his life so that you can you can obey your parents. You can honor your father and your mother as you are in Him. In Him. Children, honor your father and your mother. Obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. And may it go well. All of you. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Bless thy word that was spoken, and bless the hearts of the children and the young people. And if there is resistance, Father, and we are naturally resistant, then by that word of blessing, soften the hearts and give us hope, and give blessing to our families and our marriages, that our children may receive from thy hand all good and not evil all the days of their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Number 215. 215. Come, my people, to my law, attentively give ear, with willing heart, and teachable. Hear the words of wisdom. Let's sing stanzas one, and then four through six. One, four, five, and six of 215.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen.